Hello, and thank you for joining us for the annual video series from the International Symposium on Human Identification. Today we have Walther Parson with us. How are you doing today, Walther? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thank you. Thank you for uh, doing this over video this year. We had our 31st conference, but our first uh, digital version since uh, with the pandemic, we wanted to be safe. So uh, why don't we kick this off and why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, my name is Walter Parson. I am a molecular geneticist and working in the forensic field for, I think it's now 25 years. <clears throat> I'm uh, located at the University of Innsbruck, the Medical University of Innsbruck. I do teaching and research there primarily. Uh, my uh, research interest uh, focuses about all kinds of different markers that are useful for law enforcement purposes. Uh, most and foremost mitochondrial DNA because it's the best and most beautiful marker. Uh, but we also have interest in uh, DNA phenotyping lately and uh, that's the topic that I have been uh, talking about during the ISHI meeting and uh, massively parallel sequencing in general. All right. Yes. Uh, yes, you presented about Visage during the meeting. For some of our viewers yes. who aren't familiar with that project, could you tell us a little bit about it? Of course. Uh, visage is a French word for face. And uh, it, it is the acronym that we found uh, for a European consortium, which stands for Visual Attributes Through Genomics. And by the way, there was a, a pop band in the 80s with that name uh, Visage, which we found a very nice and energy. So when we formed this consortium a couple of years ago, uh, we found it a nice and energy to, to use this name. I think I remember that. I'm about that age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, visage is about uh, DNA phenotyping. So we would like to make progress and research in that area. And with uh, DNA phenotyping, we mean the prediction of uh, particular traits from the DNA. And we are focusing on appearance, ancestry, and age prediction. So we are targeting the forensic crime scene sample, the unknown sample, that does not have a match to uh, a perpetrator or a suspect, or that does not find a match in DNA database searches. And we would like to provide investigative leads to support the investigations by typing those traits, by predicting those traits. Okay. Now, from my understanding, the framework of Visage relies on molecular genetic tools that predict things like appearance, ancestry, age. What appearance traits can you detect? How does that work? Uh, we were uh, focusing in the appearance traits <clears throat> on those markers that are currently on vogue, if you want so. So those that were investigated in previous studies and where we understand from uh, large studies that they would be beneficial for the forensic purpose. Uh, in uh, detail, those are the markers that we use to predict eye, hair, and skin color. This combination of markers is also known as the Harris Plex S tool that uh, has been developed by our colleagues from the Erasmus University in uh, Rotterdam, the Netherlands, uh, the team around Manfred Kaiser. But we were adding additional traits to this. So we were adding uh, SNPs that target freckles, um, the eyebrow color, the hair loss in men, and the hair morphology. And all those markers go together in a, in a single panel, in a single, single multiplex panel, together with ancestry markers that we use to, to, to get this information from a single sample in a single assay. Wow, there's, uh, there's just so much that you can do with that. What tissues can you use to predict some of these traits? For um, the appearance and ancestry markers, we can target any, any tissue that has uh, DNA. So it's similar to the SDRs that we use. As soon as we can extract genomic DNA from a tissue, then we are also able to type those ancestry and appearance markers. Uh, the sensitivity of the assay is uh, very similar to STRs. We are very happy to, to have been able to achieve this goal and get full profiles down to something that equals 15 to 20 cells 
and that's about 100 to 150 picogram of DNA. Wow, that is, that's incredible. What instruments uh, have you been using to analyze the DNA and perform the predictions? We, we have been using massively parallel sequencing instruments, and that was quite a change because many of those markers uh, were typed with different technology before. For example, Harris Plex S was typed with, um, with Snapshot, which is a different technology that uses capillary. Uh, other markers uh, or other traits were typed with different technologies. So we wanted to make sure we harmonize this to a level where forensic laboratories can benefit from the experience of each other. Forensic labs continue to um, install MPS instrumentation and we wanted to make sure that we can use this instrumentation, these platforms for performing these analyses. Are these tools ready for use? When and how can industry professionals get access to them? The, the scope of the project was a research oriented project with uh, validation and implementation of tools. That means, so the European Union was funding us for a particular purpose. And uh, that means that we cannot provide final products, but we can provide prototypes that are pretty well validated and that some laboratories start to implement. We are currently in exactly that process. Um, we are in year three of the Visage project. And in that time frame. Most of the tools have been completed. They uh, have been tested in the different laboratories. Currently, we need to look at uh, a couple of legal issues uh, that come with uh, the development of such tools and development of the foreground. And uh, then we are more than happy to um, have uh, uh, contacts to companies and in handshake with companies to uh, get this technology further developed and out to the forensic community. That sounds wonderful. So it's been interesting. We've uh, talked a few different times in the past, and so it's been fun to watch the progression where things have been going over the last few years. What's next for you? What's, what's on the horizon until we see you in 2021? Well, uh, the tool development is finished in Visage, but we still have uh, a couple of uh, major things to do. Uh, first of all, this is embedded in an ethical working package, and we need to clearly understand the limitations and the consequences of what we do here. Uh, we don't want to misuse the tools. We don't want to overestimate the uh, importance of those tools. We don't want to overestimate the data. So the ethical working package is working on a, it's providing a framework within which we are trying to target the right audience. Then there is software development. Uh, a consortium partner in the group developed the software that is key in addressing the right person. The software speaks to the expert. It's not a software that provides a, a, a phenotype. It's a software that provides scientific data. It's the probability values and the age estimates. And it's the expert that translates this. And this is how we want to make sure that data are not misinterpreted and are correctly interpreted to those stakeholders in the law enforcement chain that further work on these cases. And finally, we are looking at a, a teaching and educational package that is happening in 21, where we want to train those experts with the software in order to make sure that, you know, the tools that we develop now are used in an appropriate way and interpreted in a way that it is useful for, uh, for our job. Absolutely. I think I, I, just watching this industry from outside of it for the last couple of years, I think that's always a challenge with the new tools. Definitely. Yeah. So I know you presented at Ishi, but uh, did you have a chance to attend any of the virtual sessions as well? I saw some of the sessions, uh, but with the delay of nine hours that I experienced from the time where it happened to Innsbruck, I only saw this morning sessions. Uh, but I enjoyed very much some of those talks. Yeah, how did you like it this year? I love to get people's feedback on it since it was the first time we were all virtual. Well, I, you know, from a technical standpoint, it was fantastic. I, I had doubts if, um, you know, if that lively moment comes across that we usually have at meetings. And of course, a virtual meeting would probably never be able to replace a, a real in-person meeting. But the way how this 
was structured and the seeming, it was seeming seamless workflow uh, between the presenters and the, the chairpersons. It was really very entertaining. And, uh, and the good part about virtual meetings, I think, is that people start asking more questions. Uh, at least I had the feeling. And uh, that is a positive moment. I agree. I think it's a little easier to type that question than, you know, hold up the group sometimes in a larger right. But boy, we did miss seeing everybody's faces in person. So I hope by next year we can see you in Orlando. Oh, that would be great. Yes. Thank you so much for taking time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day.